The following is a demonstration of CQ templating with JSTL. What is JSTL? JSTL stands for Java Server Pages Standard Tag Library. It supports many commonly used language concepts, including the EL expression language, conditional logic, error handling, internationalization, SQL, string and date handling, and XML. With JSTL, the programmer is able to do these things without a lot of syntax. For example, you can see with the conditional logic, this represents what is known as an if-then-else branch statement. A separate library is available for formatting numbers and dates. There are also standard library functions for determining the length of strings, arrays, and lists, as well as other things such as split and join. Other things not shown include but are not limited to substring, first index of, contains, and so on. JSTL was originally started in 2001 by Apache, and since 2.1 of the JSP standard, it has been officially part of JSP, in fact, since J2EE version 5. JSTL is also used everywhere. And finally, it is much, much cleaner than what are referred to as scriptlets. And we'll see what we mean by scriptlets as we get into the examples later. Chances are, if you've already done JSP development, you already know what a scriptlet is. But why use JSTL? Well, for one thing, it's fairly ubiquitous. And by using JSTL, you lower the bar for the next person that comes in the door who may not know CQ, but might already know JSTL. A sort of a head start to get them into templating faster. Another nice feature of using JSTL is that it allows a better abstraction of business logic using tags and so forth. It's overall cleaner than using JSP alone, and because of all these things, it's easier to maintain in the long run. If nothing else, it is extensible, so if it doesn't work for you out of the box, it's pretty easy to correct that. Using things such as tag classes and tag files, among other things, and we'll see more examples of these as we go on. In the first example, we'll demonstrate using request parameters. In a more standard scenario, you have a section of code where you're obtaining the parameters, perhaps doing a check to see if these parameters have been defined, and then finally doing something with them at the end. When using JSTL, we can shortcut the need for variables altogether by simply using the EL expression to access these as if they were already defined variables. And even in this small example, it's already reduced the code by five lines. This is important to note because most JSPs are several hundred lines long, and every line of code that you cut out is one less line of code that has to be maintained down the line. In our second example, we'll look at a very simple button component. The JSP for this component is very, very simple. As you can see from this top section, it's determining what sort of URL it has to display, and it has different logic depending on if it's internal or external. We determine if there's alt text to be displayed. Lastly, we output the corresponding HTML markup. And in this case, we use CSS to represent the different types of styles that are available. Well, that's very nice to look at the code, but there's not very much there. So what does this really look like? In our configuration, you can see that the user has many different options, including different styles. And for the sake of simplicity, these styles are not represented in HTML or in JSP, but they are all 100% CSS. Here's the example of the output that comes from this component. As you can see, very clear, very clean, and these work as expected. In our next example, we will look at a tab component. The tab component in this case originally started as an offshoot from an existing linked list component. And the linked list component has a scriptlet as you see here. And in fact, it has several scriptlets, some of which start and stop right next to each other. The result of this is that the IDE really cannot make very much sense out of where a logical piece of code begins and where it ends. For example, this while loop starts up here but actually goes all the way through the rest of the template. 
and it doesn't conclude until very far down at the very bottom. Ultimately, this results in a lot of business logic that's commingled with the markup, and a lot of spaghetti code, which is very difficult to decipher, especially when the indentation goes off. After cleaning this up, the result is something similar to this. At the top of the template, we see that we're obtaining the tabs using a very simple function, which we'll look at in a moment, as well as generating a unique ID for the following HTML. This is necessary because there are multiple copies of this on one page in some cases, and we want to ensure the uniqueness of these items so that the JavaScript logic doesn't confusingly set the wrong tab on the wrong component of the page. There's also some additional logic depending on what sort of style that we have on this page. In this case, the vertical component style has an additional section on the left-hand side. And that'll become more clear when you see a screenshot. Lastly, the rest of the markup necessary to render the tabs as well as the tab content are shown. Now before picking apart this to see how it was made any further, Let's look at what this resulting HTML renders. The user is able to select one of three different tab styles. And for the rest of it, all they define are the names of the tabs and the text of the alt text, which is shown in some cases as a section header. Otherwise, the alt text is shown as a pop-up. The horizontal style is the default style for this component. Tabs go along the top and all of the markup appears down below. Using a different set of CSS for this style, we see that we have the same overall layout, but a much different appearance. And in fact, the markup is no different. Lastly, the vertical style has this additional left-hand section as we saw when looking at the template code. Now obviously, we did not use 100% JSTL out of the box. We had to bridge a slight gap in order to make this template possible. Namely, JCR is slightly limited in terms of using JSTL expressions. And JCR code is fine as it is for Java logic. However, in JSTL, you have to have a lot of extra care and attention to what happens if a node or a property does not exist. You don't receive a null if you request a property or an attribute that does not exist. Instead, you receive a runtime error. And in order to catch these things using exist property checks and so forth, it makes the code much longer. In this case, we wanted to isolate all of that extra conditional logic to standard Java code, which we'll look at. First, we define all of the functions that we have in a tag library descriptor. This tag library descriptor file, or TLD, goes inside of your Java project alongside your Java classes into a certain location under resources. Each function that is used must be a static function declared in a class that is made public. All that is necessary to make these functions available is to list out the exact function signatures, at which point these functions are available for use inside of every JSTL that includes this tag library. The functions themselves are actually not very difficult to write, and in fact they're very short, but they do reduce a lot of common code that's repetitive. The functions themselves are very simple and small, but when you consider that these functions are things that are used very often, not having these functions results in a lot of extra lines of code that did not need to be there. So what are the limitations of JSTL? Well, quite simply, JSTL requires you to do extra deployment if you're doing custom tag libraries. You do not necessarily need to have a tag library descriptor or Java classes for custom tags if all you need are simple markup tags. Consider using tag files within your UI project directly. An example of a tag file is something like this, where it looks really much like a JSP, except that you declare the attributes that it expects as parameters at the top of it, and then finally the markup below. To use such tags, you include the tag directory, which is where all of the tags are located, as a URI parameter. 
And finally, using the tag below, it looks very much like a standard tag, except there is no need to declare a Java class or a descriptor library. And doing this in Sling looks very similar, with the exception that the tag directory path is slightly different than this. You have webinf slash tags at the beginning of your path, followed by another slash, and the entire component directory structure. For example, if your tags are located under slash apps slash my customer slash tags, then you would have slash web dash env slash tags slash apps slash my customer slash tags. Another limitation in JSTL is using JCR APIs. This is something that we had already discussed. We used helper functions to simplify the work of this. In addition to this, Sling 2648 will also allow additional functions to be added out of the box and made available to your templates for free. It will be showing up in a point release sometime after 5.6 or in version 6.0, but it is already available in the open source repository if you need it today. The final limitation of using JSTL is that it's not as convenient as scriptlets. But consider the abstraction of business logic using tags and the cleanness of the code that results from doing that. Consider that it's also easier to maintain in the long run. And as shown, it is much, much cleaner than using scriptlets. I hope that this presentation has been useful to you. See the links below for more information. Also refer to the attached PowerPoint presentation for additional links and resources. Thank you and happy coding.